This is the new BMW Z4 and it's a little bit like a chocolate bar on a hot sunny day in the way that it's gone all soft. I am of course talking about the roof because the previous Z4 had a folding metal roof whereas this one is fabric like similar cars, the Porsche Boxster and the Audi TT Roadster. Now this Z4, it starts from £37,000. However, you can save an average of around £1,700 on one through car wow. And this car has just gone on sale, so that's quite a decent discount, but the discount could increase as the car gets a little bit older. In fact, to check the price, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or follow the link below the video to get a car wow. Let's start this review by talking about the Z4's design, because I do like the look of this car, especially from the back. It's really kind of wide and muscular, and this ducktail spoiler just looks super cool. And you have real exhaust pipes. When I say real, there is a hole in there, but the surround is a little bit exaggerated. Now down the sides, it's a smart looking car, and this vent here is indeed real. It leads somewhere. I'll be careful not to scratch the paint. Now you can get different versions of this car. This is the M40i. This and the M Sport model have slightly more sporty bumpers with extra vents and scoops in them, as you can see here, and slightly different colored grills. The normal Sport model doesn't look quite so aggressive. Now on the inside, it's an interesting design with swoops and creases. Do you know what? The interior of this car reminds me of a slightly smaller version of the 8 Series. It doesn't really feel that much less premium. I really like the fact that you get this leatherette effect up here on the dash and up here on the door tops, and you get that on every single model. The stitching's quite nice, though that on the dash seems a little bit wonky, like it was put in by someone after they'd had one too many beers. Hmm. Now all cars get this kind of kaleidoscope effect here on the centre console, which it's a little bit trippy, you know. If you stare at it too long, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to see a dolphin. It's like one of those magic eye diagrams. The centre console itself is nice and fat, so you feel cocooned like you're in a real sporty car. And it's dead solid as well. I mean, look at that. It doesn't move at all. And that's the thing with BMWs. The build quality is super, super solid, and it feels quite expensive. Soft touch material here, here, and down here on the door bins. It's all very expensive, and all models get leather seats as standard, which is nice. Now, the M Sport models get this brushed aluminium trim, which does help liven up the cabin, and it contrasts nicely to the standard fit black piano plastic as well. Now, speaking of different equipment levels, let's talk about this car's specs. The entry-level sport model comes with a huge infotainment screen and a digital driver's display. Heated sport seats, weird front and rear parking sensors, and dual-zone climate control. M Sport models get a chunkier steering wheel, which does make your hands feel a little tiny. Lots of M badges and slightly different 18-inch alloy wheels to the sport car. Upgraded M Sport brakes. And it also gets some slightly lower, stiffer suspension for a more sporty drive. The M40i gets upgraded 19-inch alloy wheels. It also gets adaptive dampers and an M Sport rear differential. Finally, the seats are electrically operated and they have adjustable lumbar support. Being a German car, there are plenty of options to be had. And one worth considering is the technology pack. It costs £1,800, but it includes a reversing camera and an automatic parking aid, which will automatically park the car in a space for you. It also includes a nice big heads-up display and a 12-speaker Harman Kardon stereo, which sounds absolutely brilliant. Right, and let's continue with the rest of the review because we need to talk about the infotainment system, and it is very, very good. For instance, the satellite navigation is a doddle to program. You can use the rotary wheel, touchpad, or screen to write in letters of a postcode, or use voice commands to say the whole address. The system is quick to load in a route, and generally it's pretty good at working you round the traffic, though it's not quite as good as Google Maps at that. It's easy to input a waypoint as well, and the system will even suggest parking spots for you near your destination. Also, the screen looks really smart, it's very clear, and it's quite easy to swipe through the different menus, either using the wheel or just by touching the screen. If you want to, you can actually customise the layout so you can have different features and tiles where you want them, and it's all very easy to organise. Moving on to the digital driver's display. Now, it's all right. I'm still not convinced about having the rev counter going backwards, but it does free up space in between the two dials for the satellite navigation information, which is kind of good. My only problem is, is that it's not as bright or as colourful as the Google mapping that you can get with an Audi. 
Also, you can't really alter the look of the dials and they're a bit dark. You can cycle through different menus using this button on the side here for your infotainment, for your trip computer stuff and things like that. But it doesn't have that many functions really. Now moving on to comfort here in the front. Well, yeah, loads of adjustment in the driving position and it's a really good driving position. Very sporty being a BMW and you can get the seat really nice and low. And if you've got lanky legs, there's plenty of room for it to move all the way back. So yeah, it's a two seater, but there's enough room here in the front. If you're a tall person, you'll be absolutely fine. What you might struggle with though, is if you're a little bit large because these sports seats do hug you quite tight. I can really feel them like digging into my sides. And I like to think of myself as felt, though you may have a completely different opinion. Now, I do like the layout of the interior. It's all very simple. So all your driving stuff's here in this pod. Not the biggest fan of the standard gear selector. You can get this crystal Swarovski one, which looks really cool. I've actually grown to like it because I've got it in an eight series. And then all your climate stuff's there and all your infotainment stuff's there. And then your lights are there. It's all just sensibly laid out. You can control things on the wheel as well. The thing I'm not so keen about is the plasticky feeling of the gear shifter paddles. Storage isn't particularly great in here either. For instance, the door bins. You've got no chance with a large bottle like that. You can forget that. Won't even fit a small bottle. They are just, yeah. You can put your keys in there, maybe. There's a little bit of extra storage here where you could put your keys. And the glove box, well, that's not particularly big either. Look, you can't even fit one of those bottles in there. There is a bit more just behind you, some netting there. In terms of connectivity, well, under here, you've got your tray for your mobile phone. This has got wireless charging. There's also a USB port there, 12 volt socket as well keeps it neatly out of the way then under here you have a usb-c input there and your cup holders which may look a little bit awkward because you're going to drive along with obviously yep things in there like that however it's designed so that you can shut this one and so that the driver can have their arm resting on there so the passenger now speaking of passengers you can actually fit a child seat to this front passenger seat, which is handy if you need to take your baby along with you. But is it easy to fit a child seat? Well, yeah, it is. The wide opening doors also make it easy to fit a toddler seat into place. Even fitting a bulky rear facing seat is possible as well, which is quite handy. You can make the whole process easy by taking the roof down if you want to. Now, what if you need to carry stuff instead of humans? Well, oh no! I just trod on that water bottle that I chucked out. It must have split. And then it just, when I trod on it, it just sprayed all up my legs. That'll teach me to litter. Anyway, moving on to the boot. Now the capacity is about the same size as a small hatchback. So if you want something sporty, it's a BMW with a more practical boot, you may want to check out my detailed review of the BMW 2 Series by clicking on the pop-out banner up there. Now, Fortunately, this boot has an opening that's just about wide enough to fit a suitcase in. And unlike the previous Z4, which had a folding metal roof, the boot is the same size where the roof is up or down. There's a bit of a lip to lift stuff over, but there are some useful features like tethering hooks there if you want to tie things down. There's hooks to hang your shopping off. There's a little netted area there where you can keep some stuff. That's where the car's manual is because that glove box is so small. And there's another kind of elastic strap there which you can use to hold things down, maybe a bottle of wine or something. You might be wondering about underfloor storage. Well, you can lift this up, but all you have there is the car's battery and you could probably put some bits and pieces around there if you really wanted to. But yeah, there's no real proper storage under there and no room for a spare wheel either. So, hmm. It's kind of what you expect for a roadster, but how much stuff can you actually fit in this boot? Well, there's room for one large suitcase, a set of golf clubs and one soft bag. Also, the space to fit in a baby buggy if you need to, or four small boxes. And really, that's about half of the course for this kind of car. So they're never gonna be the most practical, but it does just about get by. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. When you're getting out of the car in tight spaces, it's all too easy to knock your knee against this protruding speaker and it absolutely blooming kills. You can get a digital key for your phone to unlock the car using your handset, but it only works with Android phones, not with Apple phones. Yet the car's infotainment system may have Apple CarPlay, but it doesn't have Android Auto at all, which is really, really annoying because I prefer Android. If you want the wind deflector, which you do, 
and you'd also like some through loading like a ski hatch then you can only get those as part of the 750 pound comfort pack and i mean really something like this it just be standard the car plays fake engine sounds through its speakers to make it seem more sporty and you sort of need it on the flat sounding two liter versions but it just sounds awful really i don't know why they have it on this three liter straight six though because it sounds awesome on its own, but then it's slightly kind of corrupted by the fake addition. Why BMW? You can operate the car's roof remotely using the key fob, which is good. So that'd be perfect if you're indoors and it starts to rain and you need to put the roof up and you don't want to get wet. But look, if you're too far away from the car, it goes out of range and it just doesn't work. So it's pointless. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the car wow, five core features. Being rear wheel drive, and with traction control, you can turn all the way off. You can <laughs> act like a total hooligan, yee! No more tyres left. You can put the roof up at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour, which is really handy if it starts to rain and you're driving and you don't really want to have to pull over. There you go. The infotainment system has its own personal digital assistant, a bit like Apple's Siri, and it understands normal voice commands, and it'll even understand where you're asking the question from, whether it's the driver or the passenger. For instance, hey BMW, set temperature to 25 degrees. I set the temperature in the front seat passenger's area on 25 degrees Celsius. There you go. The car satellite navigation system can communicate with that in other new BMWs, so if those cars experience either a hazard or some traffic problems, it will tell this car and then the sat-nav can reroute you around the issue. You can get a specific BMW app for your mobile phone, so you can do things like find your car if you've forgotten where you parked it, and also do things like preset the temperature so that when it's cold, you can get into the car and it's already nice and warm inside. Right, and let's talk about the engine choices. It's really, really simple. So there's the 20i, which has a two litre turbo with 200 horsepower and can get from 0 to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds. Then there's the 30i, which also has a two litre turbo, but with 260 horsepower, so it can go from 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds. Then there's this beautiful thing here, the 40i, which has a straight six three litre turbo with 340 horsepower, which can get from 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Now, all cars are rear wheel drive and they come with an eight speed automatic gearbox as standard. So, this range stopping one is quite expensive though. It starts from £49,000, but I've plugged the details into Carwise Configurator. I've got an offer back from a trusted Carwise dealer for £47,000. That's a saving of two grand so if you want to see how much you can save on a new car or to try our configurator click on the pop-out banner just up there or follow the link below the video the bmw z4 is okay to drive in town obviously you're sitting quite low so big vehicles such as buses and trucks can feel a little bit intimidating also the suspension is a little bit on the firm side but the normal sport cars isn't too bad it actually deals with bumps pretty well the m sport model has firmer suspension and so that is a bit more bumpy though this m40i it has an adaptive setup so it's put into comfort and it goes over bumps really really well tell you what's good as well the turning circle it's actually slightly tighter than a volkswagen golf so if you need to do a u-turn like that it's quite easy to do and it makes this car quite maneuverable in town actually okay let's see how easy this car is to park so the first thing is that the brakes they're quite easy to control so they're strong but they're not grabby it's great having an automatic gearbox, just makes it easier for doing manoeuvres. And I love the way BMW's mirrors, they go down like that so you can look at the curb so you don't curb your wheels. Now I'm using the camera and it does make a big difference having the reversing camera. Otherwise I'd have to just rely on the sensors. In fact, you know what, let's make it fair for what everyone gets a standard. Let's turn that off. So it's just all about the sensors now. See how easy it is for me to get into this spot now the bonnet is quite long and so you really have to look over it also there isn't much visibility at this rear three quarters here with the roof up but the steering's light when you have it in comfort mode so it is actually quite easy to park there yeah, no problem got into the gap dead easy now it would have been easier with the roof down so if you are struggling you can just pop the roof down that's probably what i'd do to tell you the truth so let's go on and get out of here 
Let's see how quick this car is to 60 then. So I've got some specialist timing equipment there. I'm gonna put the car into sports plus mode, put the traction into sports mode, throw the brake, throw the throttle, see what happens. Oh, little bit of wheel spin, might have affected things. That was 60 all too quickly. And bang on the money, 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Exactly what BMW said. This Z4 is actually quite a nice car for long distance motorway use because with the roof up, you don't get much wind noise at all. They've actually fitted special aluminium beams to the roof so that it stays curved even when you're going quick. There's not much tire noise either from the road, so that's great. The car feels nice and stable over bumps and side winds don't bother it either like it can do with some other sporty cars. And it doesn't tram line or follow ruts in the road much. So it's all safe and all secure. Now when you have the roof down, you don't get buffed by the wind much either, which is great. But if you remove the wind deflector, then you get loads of buffeting. So you definitely want to spend the extra to get that. Otherwise it would get on your nerves after a while. Can we have it back in now, please, Jack? Now, one thing that I do like is this automatic gearbox. It's really responsive and the engine's quick. So I'm cruising along at 50 and I'm gonna floor it now. And gearbox and engine working in perfect harmony and that, is 70 and it's accompanied by that great noise from the six cylinder engine it doesn't help economy though so yeah i'm averaging 25 miles per gallon which isn't great now this is the kind of road that a roadster is designed for something twisty something fun so this car has the perfect 50 50 weight distribution the engine at the front power going to the rear wheels so the front wheels have to do nothing besides steer Oh, and brake, of course. And when you get out onto a road like this, you just want to put the car into manual mode, change gears yourself using the paddles, and have some fun. And it really does kind of grip pretty well. Whee! Then just get a little bit leery like that. It is quite a sharp handling car, actually, and it grips really well. It doesn't quite have the, the poise and the precision of, of a Porsche Boxster, though, if it's outright driving engagement you want. In fact, if you want to find out more about the Porsche Boxster, just click up there on the pop-up around the top right-hand corner of the screen to check out my review of it. So then, what's my final verdict on the BMW Z4 Roadster? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Z4. It's not quite the sharpest driving roadster, but it's still a lovely thing to travel in. It feels very well built, packed full of tech, and with that six cylinder engine, it sounds awesome. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.